Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. I'm so excited about today's project. We are going to be making these fabric baskets. This is a very beginner friendly project. It's super easy to make. It doesn't take a whole lot of products and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. I made this out of a paint drop cloth. It's actually the same drop cloth that we used in the Ray Dunn inspired pillow covers. I'll link that video in the description below this one. But you can see just changing the fabrics how different this makes. This is a very versatile pattern and you can use it for almost anything. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. It, if you may remember, I did one similar to this about a year ago using a placemat and this is kind of a spin off of that one, but this one isn't a placemat. So let's get started. So this is what you're going to need. You're going to need two pieces of fabric cut to 12 by 20, 12 inches by 20 inches. You can use whatever type of fabric you like. I am using the paint drop cloth. It's the same paint drop cloth that I bought and used for the Ray Dunn inspired pillow covers. And I'll link that uh, video in the description below if you are interested. But I'm just using a paint drop cloth. If you wanna use a cotton fabric like I did in this one, you absolutely can. This is just a cotton leopard print and a different cotton fabric, uh, quilting cotton for the inside. So whatever you wanna use, that is perfectly fine. I'm just using, this is going to be the same inside and out. And then if you wanna use some trim, you're going to need that. I found this trim at Joann's. I thought it was really fun and perfect for this particular project. And then you're going to need some extra firm interfacing. This one I really, really like. It's the Craft Extra Firm um, by Heat & Bond Fusible Interfacing. It's really perfect for this particular project. It's soft enough, but firm enough that it still has structure. So it works really great. And uh, you're going to need a ruler and a fabric pen. Now I've gone ahead and cut out a piece of the interfacing that is approximately the same size as my outer fabric. Again, if you're doing two separate patterns, you wanna make sure you apply the interfacing to the back side of your outer fabric. So I went ahead and cut a piece approximately 12 by 20 and I fuse that with a hot iron to the back of my outer fabric for the bag. Put that aside and you guys this project is so easy there's hardly anything to it. The first thing we're going to do is fold pretty sides together in half and make a crease. All right and you're just going to clip this with some wonder clips or pins however you want to do that this is our folded edge down here i'm going to do the same thing to the other one pretty sides together this drop cloth doesn't really have a right and a wrong side so you just have to pretend that you can tell the difference here and we're just going to clip that one together Perfect. All right, now you're going to use your ruler and you're going to measure an inch and a half square from the edge and mark that with your pen. Repeat on this side, inch and a half square. And you can cut out an inch and a half square template if you want out of cardstock, if that makes it easier. Whatever works for you. It's always my motto. Inch and a half square. It's a little harder to mark on this one since it doesn't have the interfacing. Okay, once you have your squares all marked, you're going to use some sharp fabric scissors and just cut those squares out. And I suggest using scissors, not your rotary cutter. It's too easy to over snip with the rotary cutter. You have much more control with the scissors. Okay, so once you have both of your corners snipped, you can go ahead and add some more clips if you want. But you're going to take it over to your sewing machine and you're going to start stitching this close. 
but you're going to leave an opening on your lining piece about oh uh, let's say let's say one two let's say three inches and you're not going to sew between those lines as always that's how we're going to turn this right side out so you're going to sew from here to here from here up to the line don't sew between the lines and from here and up then you're going to sew all the way up this side and all the way up this side so I always backstitch at the beginning and the end. So from here to here, from here to here, skip here to here, up this side and up this side. So go ahead and do that and meet me back here. Okay, so we have sewn our two pieces and this one is sewn on both sides. We have the openings at the bottom, same here, except for we have also have this opening on the side where we didn't sew. So you want to take your outer fabric, open it up, and you're going to line, and it kind of helps to finger press this so that you can establish where that center line is. You can also press it, but you're going to open it up and you're going to line that center of the bottom with the side seam and clip. Make sure everything is nice and flat. Same thing on this side. Line that with that side seam or with that bottom center clip. Make sure everything is lined up nicely. Do the same on this one. Again, I'm going to finger crease so that I can see where that center line is. If you want to push your seam to the side you can if you want to open it up you can it really depends on your seam allowance if you're using the drop cloth and you're using this particular one that frays really easy you might want to go back and zigzag your raw edges or serge them but that's up to you you don't have to and once again we're going to clip it Okay, so now you want to take this over. You guys know how to do this by now. But you want to take this over your sewing machine and you're going to sew right across all four of your corners. Make sure you use the same seam allowance throughout the project to keep everything consistent. Okay, so we have all four corners sewn and we still have this opening in our lining on the side. We're going to take our outer fabric and turn it right side out. those corners out. You might want to use a chopstick or a corner turner. I'm just going to use my fingers for the sake of the video. Do you want those corners out? All right, so it looks like a bag now. Okay, so we have our outer fabric turned right side out and our lining turned wrong side out. Now I went ahead and took this over to my serger just because this is fraying so badly I don't want it to come undone when I'm all done. So I just uh, serged the top edge that's raw. If you want you can zigzag it if yours is doing the same depending on what type of drop cloth you get. Some of them don't fray like this. But next we're going to apply our trim to the outer part. So I like to start on a side seam and just clip it into place right along that top seam or that top edge or clips but go ahead and take that over to your sewing machine and apply your trim so all the way around as close to the edge as you can get and again if you have an edge that's fraying you might want to zigzag that first okay so we've got the trim sewn across the top now we're going to take this outer fabric that's turned right side out and place it inside the lining that is still turned wrong side out like so. Make sure all your pom-poms are facing down. So you should have right sides together if you're doing you know multicolored fabrics and you're going to line up your side seams and you're going to clip your side seams together. And 
then you want to work the middles and put as many clips as you feel comfortable with. By the way, when I sewed the trim on, I used my zipper foot. That kind of helps when you have pom-poms or something hanging down a little bit. All right, so now you're going to take it over to your sewing machine and again, start at a side seam and sew all the way around the top. Back stitching at the beginning and the end. Okay, so we have sewn all the way around the top. The top two edges are sewn together. We're going to reach inside that side opening and carefully pull everything back through. This is why you want to make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end so that you don't rip this opening bigger. Okay, once you have everything turned right side out, you're going to reach inside again, that same opening, make sure your corners are pressed out both the lining and the outer and then you need to close up this side seam so you're going to pull on it and it's just going to kind of naturally fold in on itself as if it were sewn and then you're just going to stitch right up that seam and close that up so you can see I stitched mine closed that's going to be on the inside on the side nobody's ever going to see it we're just going to tuck that back inside now. Line everything up. Your pom pom should be standing straight up. You might want to take it to the iron. Iron everything nice and flat again. That's why I like that stiff interfacing because it just stands up nicely by itself. So now you're going to take it back to the sewing machine and you're just going to give it a nice top stitch right along this top edge just to keep that lining in place and to keep everything looking nice and finished. All right, so we're all done. You can see I did my top stitching and now you can flip this down. If you want to iron it more square, you can, but I like this shabby look of this and how cute is this? I'm in love with it. Now this could easily be a Ray Dunn inspired uh, fabric basket. We could put the word grow on here and as a matter of fact I might. I hope you enjoyed this super simple project. You can see this is a very versatile project and it looks totally different just by changing the fabrics. You can also change the size just by adjusting the beginning size of your rectangles. Here is a picture of the one I did a year ago and you can see very clearly it was inspired by the same concept. So thanks so much for being here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button while you're here and click that bell. That will send you a notification every time there is a new video out on my channel. I really appreciate your support and there are links to all of the products used in the description below the video. See you guys later. Never stop making. Bye-bye.